and I should be live looks like I just got the message on my other channel and it looks like it's going I'm gonna give people and I should be live <laughs> looks like I just got the message on all my right other channel. you guys are getting all kinds of echoes here I'm not sure if uh, I have the chat the chat open in this I'll see if I can follow along on my phone I started the application kind of like backwards <laughs> so we'll see how that works out okay I, I think I got the chat open now good deal and, uh, let me set this guy up over here and then maybe I can follow along like I normally do and let me reject that because they had their chance and now they're now they don't all right here's what you need to make fairy house nightlight that's the name of this video yeah, let me get rid of this title board here I think that's it all right and let me move you back and set you up a little bit okay let me find out what's going on here I knew the second I tried to do something I was going to get all kind of business all right, let me try this again all right turn everything down because I don't want to get distracted because that's usually what happens I'll be in the middle of a sentence and then everyone and my mom needs to message me for whatever and I'm so far away I'm not really able to do anything so <laughs> if it if you need me to save your life you need to call someone else because I'm in the middle of a life and there ain't nothing I can do about it <laughs> all right and this is going great so far put you up here so you can see my little workstation which is going to be the first part of making a fairy house let's turn on some lights okay I have a lot of lights here and it's not just because um, I'm filming it's also because you need a lot of light you need to be able to see there's a lot of details a lot of action going on in this this model over here so it helps to have your basic tools of course you need uh, scissors and um, oh, I guess I should play that there we go you're gonna need scissors and pliers you're gonna need some pliers a couple ratty pairs of scissors you're gonna need paints markers help just your basic standard craft fair have that on hand and I think we all have had lists from school on what's included in those so <laughs> I, I don't think I have to run through the remedial level stuff that you need because most of us if you're an artist at all or if you have any interest interest like that at all chances are you have a lot of the stuff around like glue sticks you have a glue gun it's one of the materials you you the tools that you'll need you might even need a little saw blade I have one of those handy here it's just a, a tiny little hacksaw blade and it's for soft wood I don't want anyone to hurt themselves but I use that to kind of score it and then snap it with pliers so I get a clean break so I'm going to move these back and I'm going to show you uh, some of the things that I do to make life easier when I make a model. And I have some stuff set out here. One of the things that I try to do to make life easier and it's hard for you guys to see. See that here? I'm going to click out this overhead light. There, that's a little bit easier. Little cups, little containers, and uh, these markers here are uh, upholstery markers they help to cover up scuffs and if you have in your car or whatever costs uh, about a dollar for three of these and they're different tones and they're earth tones 
and the the reason why I like to use them is because I, I sometimes I want to get a nice shine on the top of the the petals here the pine cone petals but I don't want to use shellac I don't want to use anything really harsh or stringent like stains because I don't really have any place to go and I don't want to stink up the whole complex with uh, they're really strong and you have to have ventilation and what have you but not with these and uh, since they're just a dollar it's really easy to get a little cup these you can get like a half dozen or so for a dollar and some alcohol some strong alcohol pop the pop the top out of this you can kind of turn it upside down and uh, just drip a little bit of alcohol all alcohol in there and it's going to run out this pigment into a little cup and you'll get enough to cover uh, a full model or so with uh, each of these you'll have plenty of material and then you can just cap it off and use it later and I'll show you I think I have yeah some that I've been using for quite some time now and I have to make some more because this is almost out and I also mix it with just a little bit of white glue it works with it well mix that all together and it makes like a good shellac or a good coating like that. and these little containers are great for holding if you if you go out and you hunt rocks or whatever like I do or little whatnots or doodabs that you think would go it great in a fairy house these little containers are great for holding those they're also great for holding some of the material that you need Before I get into that though, I'm going to get into some of the the color and how I get these kind of textures. The uh, Let me move this guy up here. One of the things I think really sells this model is that stone texture and it's also translucent. This light pops right through there. You can see it has a beautiful base on it and it's got a plug in plug-in light it's a chip on board super bright LED it's designed to last for a lifetime and if it goes out 50 years from now or whatever no one's really going to care because it's still a beautiful piece without the light in it <laughs> but the light really does take it up it's a beautiful night light and it's beautiful because it has a lot of rich textures and different color tones and I'll show you how to achieve those an easy way, an easy way to achieve those. So I have a few hacks that I use to make life easy. And I'll show you some of these. I'm a bachelor <laughs> and sometimes I don't have time or the resources to make a big meal so I, I'll do the single serve meals and instead of putting these trays in the trash I'll uh, clean them really well and I use them as paint trays and they'll keep things together keep my uh, if it does get bumped and spill it's going to go into the tray and, it, and it's easy to pick these up and move it so it keeps my surface available for crafting which is really important because one of the frustrations you'll find in doing a piece like this is how quickly your area gets devastated your work area gets cluttered and things get lost and it really takes down the efficiency of, and the enjoyment of making one of these. So I have uh, a few trays set up here and I'll show you what's in these. These little two ounce cups are great and I reuse them for color. I try not to throw things away as much as I can. I try to reuse them or repurpose them. And some of these cups I've been using for years so truly the plastic does not break down. There's no excuse for throwing these away really if you can get the stuff out of them. So uh, I make just your primaries with some uh, poster paint and I keep uh, my primary colors in one and then I keep my t uh, tint and shade in another and then some of my stains and that and my glue uh, glue wash. Now that's the secret to this project is uh, how do you make the walls? Well I use glue and paper to uh, to make the walls but you have to water your glue down or else it tears your tissue paper so um, over the years I've developed a way to make that uh, happen a lot easier so let me move my glue gun out of the way here uh, I don't like to make color again and again and again 
and I'll work with this throughout the day and I don't want it to dry out so you'll see there's some water beads in there some Orbeez and that's going to keep this uh, glue mixture hydrated so it doesn't thicken and uh, usually at the end of the night I'll just pour a little bit of water in here and it keeps everything nice and by the next day the water is evaporated down enough to where I pretty much have the same consistency and to just go through there and stir them um, probably not mix the colors so much like I just did there but it's it's not so important and that just helps there and then you've got all kinds of space to to clean stuff and I also like to keep a cup with water in it of course anybody who paints does that Sorry, I had that. Thought I had that detail <laughs> hemmed up there. So my water cup to keep my brushes in. Rinse those if you can. Rinse them right away. Let me just put them back. I have a, an earth tone cup here, glass cup. It's kind of heavy, and then I have a grass tone, foliage tone. And then I have a blue so I can uh, change the go from green to a blue green and get all the really nice shades of stuff there. So those are my glue trays that I use. Reduce, reuse, repurpose. I'm all about that. I don't have any kids, but if I did, I sure wouldn't want to leave them a world that's trashed. <laughs> Too late. So I do my best not to do that. And you can kind of tell I have an affinity for nature with the kind of models that I have here. So I need to grab my cup over here and I'll continue with the materials and tool tour, tools tour. All right, next thing tissue paper. People get this as presents. You get it stuffed in a bag. People don't like to to wrap presents or they like to make present material stuff uh, you can reuse again. <laughs> At least they give me because they know that's how I, I roll. So I get a lot of this just packaging. But if not you can get a big big bundle of that. You can make dozens of models out of just one package of that so tissue paper is uh, another thing that I use in my models pine cones I think almost every territory in the US or maybe you know most a lot of places around the world have access to pine cones but if you don't it's not the end of the world there are a lot of other materials that you can use in place of this pretty much any um, flat or kind of disked or shingle shape <laughs> is, is what you're looking for and for a pine cone I have a lot of those and they vary in size so I get a lot of variety that way and plus many are available at, on one place I don't have to hunt them all down so that's why I use pine cones it's kind of novel that's what they look like after they've been plucked clean <laughs> I've used these as trees, like palm trees, in the bases. Like I'd have it setting off on the side. You know, be a nice tree in that model. So even that's a good, good material to use, and I like to keep them around. You'll need sticks. I'm probably one of the fewest. Although where I live, a lot of people love nature. They hike, and if they see a beautiful stick, and by beautiful I mean it's got like all kinds of curves and little offshoots and stuff and it maybe has lichen and moss on it they'll drop that right in the dash of their car like a bobblehead or something but it's just a stick and they might put some rocks and stuff so I do see that a lot I know I'm not the only person who gets excited about sticks but uh, oh hey Donnie thanks for joining me the tissue paper uh, you can also you that that reminds me as well there's alternatives to tissue paper and for larger models, this may work better. 
because it's a little bit stronger, but you can actually use bathroom tissue. If you can find the kind like Scott that's just plain Jane, it's actually in squares already that you can use. And if it has, um, I know some of it is like slick. I don't know how it works, but that's the best kind to use for models and probably the worst kind to use in the bathroom. But some have textures, weaves in them, puffy pillows, whatever they want to call it. You can find um, a pattern or a texture in the bathroom tissue that looks like stone and that's great to use as well in this project. So it's not just limited to tissue paper. Pretty much any th absorbent paper will work and uh, you don't want like I wouldn't use cardstock so much I wouldn't use um, uh, like copy paper although I have used that in a model but it's a totally different thing <laughs> so if you're hoping to achieve this technique that I'm demonstrating stick with the thinner papers and you'll be okay that way um, got sidetracked on the papers what was it oh yeah sticks I know I'm not the only person in Ashland who's excited about sticks. So if you uh, see some sticks, I don't tear any off of a tree. First of all, they're too green and they're really not going to work for what you want and they could be infested. So I just go for sticks that are on the ground. I put those in a plastic bin like this and uh, I kind of leave it off if I can leave it outside if it looks really sketchy and I'll inspect it for anything that's obvious and then I'll just let it set for a while covered and usually after a few days a lot of the insects have um, they've either died or they've come out or they've hunkered down and then I'll microwave it. I'll microwave the sticks. They're usually no bigger than what you can put in a microwave and if uh, they're fairly dry if there's any eggs or insects or termites or anything in these sticks it will kill them <laughs> and then you don't have to worry about it infesting your home or anybody else's home so uh, just a uh, pro tip there for dealing with natural botanicals you definitely want to think about they could be infested you want to have some treatment techniques and processing techniques that help eliminate those completely and if you can have as many of those just redundant systems because you don't want to rely on one thing it could miss something so you do a number of techniques and there's a good chance that if a person's home does get infested it's as likely it'll be infested by its own environment than from your artwork and that's what I'm going for continuing with natural botanicals and I have lots of trays these plastic bins you can pick those up for a dollar just pretty much everything if I can get it for a dollar I'm getting it for a dollar first of all it's easy to compute in my costs and it's a dollar <laughs> it's pretty good value for a lot of this a lot of the things that I use I'm not trying to spend a lot of money to make something that's really beautiful I know a lot of people don't have tremendous resources I'm one of those people so um, this is definitely is an exercise in frugality so the natural botanicals that I like, I love lichen. I know a lot of people don't have access to lichen where they're at, but I think you can go to floral shops and get that, but it's just going to raise your costs. Along with moss, bearded moss, there's lots of uh, commercially available dried moss that's naturally harvested it, um, renewably. So look, if you do get that in the store, make sure that it's renewably harvested with best practices. And when I do get my botanicals naturally, I use best best practices. And if you if you do it on um, federal park property, you in most instances have to have a license to take anything. If you mushroom hunt, you have to have a license for it. I don't know if a lot of people know that, <laughs> but at least in the Rogue River Siskiyou National Forest up the road here, you have to have uh, a license to take anything out of the forest that wasn't brought in there and if you do take it you have to make it look like nobody took anything so the next part of the project as far as materials go is the base I've used all kinds of bases you can see in this model and it's pretty lightweight since it's paper 
mostly paper. It's a really lightweight model. I think the most, the heaviest thing in this model is probably the base, this piece of glass, and that's good. It keeps it from toppling over. This isn't really going to topple over easily, and if it does, it's not so heavy that it's going to fly apart. Although these things might break off, but uh, that's not the end of the world, and I'll explain why after I get through this. But I use a number of, this is a block of wood, natural wood that I used as a base. And um, it's nice to have something heavy on the bottom. You can use, if you like, a nice heavy rock and build a house around it or connected to it in such a way. And you can build up th um, the paper to look like rock so it can make its own base. That way, if you don't any have anything commercially available like this only costs a dollar <laughs> like I said you're gonna hear that a lot a dollar for the space and they're pretty good they're pretty well made but you do want to inspect them because I've had I've had them break in half just looking at it I don't know what happened thermal shock or maybe it just wasn't um, produced that was just wasn't uh, weeded out of the bad into the bad pile but um, yeah, you definitely want to kind of look it over. If you're un in, unsure whether or not it's going to hold together, I keep in mind that this whole base is pretty much glued together. So even if it does crack, it's everything's holding everything together. So you really wouldn't know it cracked because nothing's going anywhere. And uh, this is a piece of bark. You Sometimes you can get this commercially available. I uh, got this from private property of a person I knew and that's just a big piece of bark that would make a nice part of a base so there's a number of materials I try to stick with a rule of thumb as keeping it as natural as I can and where it's unnatural it's it's just a matter of how it has to be put together like the hot glue is unnatural the paint da -da -da -da. Okay, we got through the base there. Check my list of stuff that I need. The next thing, <laughs> I got this other, another plastic bin. Now these aren't, this isn't the best example of this material. And I would like to, if I had access to a place nearby that would provide a better variety, I definitely would have some on hand but as it is the only place available offers two varieties of this um, potpourri stock it's scented it's colored sometimes it's just natural and you can put it in like a bowl or whatever I pick these pieces out because they make they represent things in these sculptures and they do it with a natural material and you can see that in this one there are seed pods here that are awnings and uh, I have a lot of moss that represents bushes different colored bushes caps so it adds to the whimsy adds to the natural quality of it and you can get that from the bags of potpourri so be on the lookout for those these were of course a dollar a bag and I have material for a while though I'm starting to run out of the ones that I really like so I'm going to have to get another bag of this. Let's see what else are in these, these models. Oh yeah, yeah specifically a, a couple other things you have to. Now I have, uh, I'm a rock hound and I have some amethyst and uh, a necklace parts of a necklace that broke I kept the these are feathers metal feathers so anything like that can be a part of this model so I keep those and always remember that that could fit in there somehow and a good illustration of that is here are some crystals and there's a big crystal here and these are some beautiful crystal rocks so those make great decorative items as well as uh, moss covered or lichen covered sticks that have been treated 
and um, one of the questions I get about these models are the natural botanicals won't they rot or break down or attract insects and they would if they weren't properly processed uh, the commercial commercially available ones have been processed but then you're getting into like all kinds of chemicals that I'm not comfortable with and I think are really unnecessary so for me personally I use a more natural process of dealing with uh, decay of these and yes they will break down over time pieces of this bearded moss will break break off and it's not going to look as crazy bushy as it does now and that's why it looks crazy bushy to allow for some of this to break off over time and it's not going to really detract from its overall beauty and completeness it's going to allow it's allowed to thin and out a little bit but the best you can do is just keep it in a place that's closed off from a lot of humidity, certainly from any access to insects, like a curio cabinet, something like that, and it will do wonderfully there. And people can come and enjoy it and look at it and just be inspired. It really is a beautiful piece of work. And if you have a lot of art, a lot of stunning art in your home, this certainly would probably fit in. So if you'd like to do that as a project, I, I think you can pull it off. I really do. I have a lot of confidence in you. So, um, one of the odd materials that I've been using is water beads in art. And um, if you're an artist, I encourage you to just grab a tub of these and experiment, paint with them. Uh, try to use them in some way that you think uh, is going to help you out. Like I put them in my glue to keep my glue wet. So it works out for me. So I definitely do encourage this as an art supply, and the reason why I mentioned it is, is because I've had uh, some artists who are starting out who never thought to use water beads, and I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> the message there is to not be afraid to step outside and uh, think of great alternatives. I think uh, just a couple more things to talk about in this model here. Oh, I can, while I'm on the subject of water beads, in this model that I'm presently working on, and I'll be doing this on Facebook live feeds, I shaped this paper using water beads. I put paper down on the inside of the scaffolding made with sticks, and the top was open, and I just poured water beads down, and it, this was holding them like a cup. And it gave me some outward pressure so that when I applied my paper um, to the outside, everything stuck together really well and it made the job so much easier so I think with the smaller models because normally I have to go in with like a paintbrush and hold the side on the inside so that when I paint on the outside it's not pushing everything inward so the water beads really really helped there so just wanted to share that with you guys let me sh prepare a little bit here to kill some lights and hope now in this piece I usually try try to add some zao to my pieces give them some utility so they're not just um, something to look at they also provide some functional aesthetic like accent light or night light so on this piece here I have a um, string of lights have an example here. This is how they appear. There's 10 super bright LEDs and those have been situated around the base so it shines through the glass, it shines through the crystals, it shines inside and it's it's just beautiful I think. Really takes the quality of this piece up here. So adding electronics to your fairy houses <laughs> you want to really be careful and kind of know what you're doing but these battery powered ones they're really low powered and as long as you have the battery pack out in a way from the artwork itself like I've done here because if anything is going to overheat or malfunction or dissolve it's going to be the pack and I don't want any of that to come in contact with the model because then it can become a uh, an ignition source so if I have it externally if it gets hot or anything whatever surface it's on is going to be able to withstand that a lot better than this model and it's going to give you an indication there's a problem on the surface rather than a flaming 
artwork you've paid hundreds of dollars for. So that's one thing to consider when you put these lights in. And I have these lights here that I will be adding to this piece here. And if you're curious to see what that might go like, what that might look at, look like, let's give that a try and see. Isn't that amazing? And this was not hard. <laughs> it really was not hard. And if you don't believe me, you can go to my Facebook and uh, check out some of the videos. I think they're available to everyone. And I, uh, I kind of cut up and I get into the zone. So um, you're sure to be exposed to all manners of things there. Um, mostly like 99.9% .9 above the board, but sometimes things go, go blue. And uh, so it's a little bit of a more raw kind of place to be than my YouTube channel. So I want you to heads up heads up there but you will get to see me make one of these and uh, I'll be continuing to do that so I wanted to give there were people who were interested on Facebook they were interested on YouTube they wanted to know all of my materials they wanted to know my um, the tools that I use and also they just want to see how it's done whether or not they're going to do it themselves doesn't really matter they're fun to watch be made I enjoy making them. This one here, I think you saw at the beginning, it has the night light in there. Isn't that gorgeous? Could you imagine? Now this piece, if you had it out in the open, because if it was a night light, you'd probably want it out in the open. And uh, to clean this, you, let's see, I'm trying to find. You just get you kind of a, a soft, soft brush that's got a little bit of oomph to it. And you can just go like, you know, I know it may sound like a pain, but that's definitely how you would dust this off. And then that works really well. And you could do that maybe a couple times a month, it'd be all right. Some of this stuff down here, it's okay if it gets a little bit dusty. I mean, it's it's outside. You You certainly can try to dust it off and take if there's a spider a spider is the spiders love these <laughs> I'm not trying to scare you off of them but if you have like a little house spider or something it'll try to hang out in here so uh, you definitely want to get rid of those house spiders or this is going to be its house which that'd be cool too it's like look at my spider house but anyway uh, a light night light in there so I definitely wanted to show the materials I use the tools I use and uh, give you some tips if you don't have access to those things, some alternatives. Uh, the paints are poster paints. You, you're s certainly encouraged to use something better, but I've even gone so far as to use uh, food coloring because I didn't have, didn't have anything else, but I, I wouldn't recommend that. It fades over time, but uh, if you don't mind your artwork fading over time and looking kind of antique, I guess that's okay that was my I was allowing for that actually in the artwork so it worked out I've used marker marker ink before just pop the top off and use it like a, a blow marker and just blow the ink out into a little cup add some water if they're water washable markers and then you have some a color wash there too so be resourceful and think outside the box and you can make this with all kinds of stuff so uh, I'm going to do another video where I'm going to talk about some of the uh, different styles of this is a woodland mountain mountain woodland style and this is kind of like uh, down in the valley and then uh, I have some that are more like midwestern woodland they don't have as they don't have the lichen and stuff on them and so you can do themes of them like uh, a beach one that's maybe made with shells a lot of shells and beach stuff, uh, driftwood. You could probably do one that's just rocks. Maybe it represents the the, the beach. And I'll show you a technique for doing a sand cast technique of these. So if you want to do a desert version, you don't live where there's pine cones. There's a desert version of this that uh, I'll probably get into later. But right now I'm doing the mountain woodland one, woodland ones on my Facebook. So uh, be sure to join me on my Facebook and join me on my YouTube and together 
I would uh, love to encourage you to give this a try over the next few weeks. So uh, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up if you would. I really appreciate that. It lets me know I'm doing a good job. And if you want to see videos like this in the future, you want to know about them uh, right away, give me a subscribe, hit that bell, and then you'll get a notice. It lets you know I'm doing a live feed to check me out or I've uploaded a video of some kind and uh, check that out. I'm not a huge a huge uploader on YouTube, but I do a lot of a lot of stuff on Facebook. So whatever you enjoy, there's something a little bit of something for everyone. So thank you again. Thanks so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. And until next time, guys, uh, take care.